Okay, so what I'm going to attempt with this video here is I'm going to attempt to give you a comprehensive look at uh, replacing the transmission fluid, uh, as well as properly checking the level of the transmission fluid um, on a Chrysler 200C model year 2015. This one has a 2.4 liter and it's front wheel drive. Um, however, uh, this is the nine speed transmission. Uh, I think they call it, Chrysler calls it the 948 TE transmission. And a lot of the information in this video is gonna be applicable to other uh, Chrysler Dodge Jeep vehicles that have the same transmission. Um, there might be some differences. For example, in this video, uh, it's difficult to get to the fill, uh, to the fill check hole. Um, in order to put new fluid back in, it's a challenge. Um, but I've seen uh, other vehicles that have the same transmission where you can get a funnel with a very long tube down from above and it's easier to fill the transmission. So there's gonna be some differences uh, as far as some of the access, but the basics in this video are gonna be helpful for a broad range of different vehicles. Um, so what I've done here is I've seen uh, on YouTube that there's sort of bits and pieces of this information out there in different videos, probably four or five different videos I saw that were helpful for certain aspects. Um, but I'm trying to bring all the information into one place so that someone can watch this video and see the whole process from start to finish, uh, from getting the vehicle up, uh, getting the, the check plug off, um, draining it, checking the fluid before and after, um, and all the little tricks and challenges that are involved in it. So hopefully at the end, you can have a complete understanding of what it takes to do this job. Um, so here we go. Uh, today I'm gonna to teach you how to replace the transmission fluid on a 2015 Chrysler 200C. Uh, this has the 2.4 liter engine, front wheel drive, uh, nine speed automatic transmission. So before we get into that, um, a lot of newer transmissions are uh, not serviceable or checkable um, by the owner, okay, by uh, your, your traditional uh, do-it-yourself. Or um, there are a lot of times there are no dipsticks. Uh, some cars don't even have engine oil dipsticks anymore, which just amazes me. Um, but one of the ways that the automakers are getting away with that is they're saying, they're calling these transmissions um, sealed units and saying that they don't ever need to be serviced, that they're, they're good for the lifetime uh, of the, they just say they're good for a lifetime, I think. Um, and from my perspective, what that really means, uh, in normal English is that to the first owner that buys the car new and is going to drive it 50, maybe 60, maybe up to a hundred thousand miles, the transmission is probably going to be fine. As long as the vehicle is not abused or run in, uh, you know, uh, harsh conditions all the time, the transmission and the fluid will probably get you to a hundred thousand miles. Now, of course, that only covers a certain segment of people that can afford to buy the cars new and are only going to keep them for so long. So lifetime is kind of a deceptive term, okay? This car is around 112,000 miles. Uh, we're going to be changing the transmission fluid. I'm going to put a, links to a couple different videos in the description um, where I got some of this information from, but I haven't seen a video so far that walks you through the whole thing from start to finish where someone with some mechanical skills and some patience can actually change the transmission fluid yourself. Um, I don't have the owner's manual for this vehicle. I've read a couple different things online, uh, either that this transmission specifically is completely sealed um, and doesn't need any service, um, or I've also read uh, that needs service after 60,000, uh, but that might've been a different year. But regardless, uh, to me, the, the point boils down to just because your transmission says it's sealed and it never needs service, it's lifetime, that's not necessarily uh, accurate. If you're gonna have a vehicle uh, near 100,000 miles or over 100,000 miles, or maybe you're the second owner, you're gonna get it at 50 and get rid of it at 150, you think, uh, or maybe even longer, you're really gonna to wanna to plan on replacing the transmission fluid at some point. Um, transmission fluid is just like any other fluid. It's a hydraulic fluid, um, and over time it does break down. Um, and it does need to get replaced at some point. So basically just because they've stretched the interval very, very long, doesn't really mean that it never needs to be changed. So that's kind of a little bit of background of why I'm getting into this and I'll be able to show you guys what I did. And I'll, like I said, I'll reference uh, some source material in the description. It was very helpful. Okay, here we go. Okay, to start with, you're gonna need all four wheels off the ground. Honestly, this is gonna be a lot easier with a lift, but I managed to get the car level with uh, ramps on the rear and then jack stands on the front. So the first step I took here was recommended in another video. And then once I looked at it, I agreed. Um, I popped off this tie rod. 
out of the knuckle. Basically that is achieved with a five millimeter uh, Allen socket on this. And then I found an 18 millimeter uh, 60 degree offset wrench to be helpful because uh, on the underside, that bolt is recessed in the aluminum uh, casting. So it's, it's easier to have the offset wrench. You could probably get away with something else, but that's how I find it to be easiest. So get that out of the way. Gives it a little more reach, a little more convenient reach in this area. Okay, so here's what we're looking at. We have to be able to get in and take off that. Okay, what I'm touching there with the pointer. That is the check fill hole on the back of the transmission, okay? Uh, that's a six millimeter Allen. I should be able to reach in there and release that. Um, just in general, when you do a transmission or gearbox or anything, you always wanna make sure you can get your fill hole uh, open first before you check your take out your drain plug. Because sometimes you may not be able to get the fill, fill plug out. And then you empty the transmission or gearbox, then you're really up a creek. So now we got the drain down here. This is going to be our drain bolt for the transmission. Um, I haven't pulled that yet. I haven't checked what size that is, but I'll, I'll let you know when we get there. So basically the process here is going to be, we're going to pull out that fill plug. I'm going to check it with a homemade dipstick because that's the other interesting thing about this vehicle. It has no transmission dipstick. I think we mentioned that already. And you can either buy what I found to be, uh, I think it was like a 40 or $50 tool, or you can make one as long as you're careful with it and measure correctly. Um, so maybe we'll go over that. Uh, let me see if I can get a ratchet in there first on that fill plug. So this is the arrangement that I found to work for me. I was able to get a quarter inch drive ratchet in there. There's not a lot of room for a three eighths. Maybe you could get it in there. I couldn't do it. And what's on the quarter inch ratchet is a quarter inch two three eighths drive adapter with a six mil Allen head socket on it. That took some work. It was tricky because you don't have a lot of swing there. Uh, so basically uh, if it didn't fit in, I had to pull the ratchet back out, twist it a couple degrees, twist the socket a couple degrees so it would key in properly to the Allen head in the top of the fill plug. And then uh, finally get it seated. Make sure it's seated all the way down. You want to get your hand on top of that ratchet and really squeeze it down tight. Um, it did take a pretty good amount of force, especially being in such a tight place, to crack it loose. But I have it loose now. Um, I basically worked... I'm on, laying on my right shoulder right now. I basically worked my left hand all the way in, in this way, because I'm working on the ground. And that, that's what I found was the, the best. You also have some access through this side, um, if you need to, you know, use your both hands at the same time. You want to use left over here, right on the other side. So that gives you an idea how to get to that fill plug. So um, I'm just going to twist that out now, and then we'll talk about the uh, dipstick. Okay, here's how we're going to make our dipstick. I have right here a, I guess you'd call this an 11-inch wire tie. Uh, it's almost 12 inches long. Or not including the head, uh, about uh, 295 millimeters, okay? So we have to start with here. Um, we have to end up, I'm sorry, we have to end up with a tool that allows us to measure as much as 140 millimeters um, from tip to head of this, okay? So what I'm going to start by doing is I'm going to give this a sharp twist at the top sharp bend. This is so it'll actually catch at the top of that fill hole that we just opened up. Okay, so it won't fall all the way in. So that's going to be the top of our tool now. So now, from that point, now we got to measure down 140 millimeters, and then we can actually cut this, cut this off at that point. So I'm just going to measure from that bend, like that, down to 140 which is right there. So that is how long the tool will be. Now we need to make marks every 10 
millimeters. I'll see if I have a working Sharpie here. That one looks pretty good. So we'll give us a strike there, a strike at 20, a strike at 30. What I'll probably do is I'll probably make these same marks on the back of the zip tie. That way they're real easy to see, regardless of which side I end up being able to read when I'm under the car. Um, so basically, when we're ready to check the transmission at the end, we're going to use these marks, which we now know are 10, 20, 30, 40, so on up to 140. And those are going to correlate on a, on a chart that Chrysler puts out that tells us what level the transmission fluid should be at at a certain temperature, at a certain operating temperature. Um, we'll also go over how to find out on the car's computer what the current operating temperature of the transmission is. So that way we know if the reading we're getting is appropriate for that temperature or if we need to maybe add or take away a little bit of fluid. So the first thing I'll do just to get a baseline reading, um, I'll turn the car on. I'll get the current transmission temperature. It should be pretty cool. The car's been off for a while. And that will give me a baseline to know where this sits right now. And then it'll also give me an idea where it should be when I'm done. Because I'm not. Okay, so before I go over uh, the next step of actually uh, checking the transmission fluid level with the homemade dipstick, um, I got to tell you a couple different things. So the correct way to check the proper fluid level in this vehicle is to make sure that the operating temp of the transmission is at least 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then you can take a sample of the level. Uh, also, when you check it at the proper temperature, uh, the engine has to be running. Um, the levels on the chart that you're looking for are assuming that the engine is at operating temperature and that the engine's running. Now, for the purposes of the video that I did so far, I did my check with a cold transmission with the engine off. So my levels were a lot higher um, than the chart would suggest or the chart would expect. Um, however, I made sure that when I was done, that the same level in the pan, that I got the same reading under the same conditions when I was done. Okay, so when I was finished, I checked the level again with a cold transmission with the engine off. That way I know I still had the right amount of fluid. But it's not technically the absolute proper way to do it. I think I'll be okay if I can get away with it um, because it's the same amount of fluid coming out uh, and then going back in. But if you want to be uh, more accurate, you're going to want to check this transmission both times uh, at operating temperature with the engine running. Okay, I'm going to try and give you a view from back here because it's that is such a tight space in there. Okay, make sure that that uh, bend we did at the top of the dipstick bottoms out on the top of that fill plug hole. And so right now, with it cold, I'll find out what the temperature is here in a moment. With it cold, but I'm a little above 30, probably uh, about 34 or 35 millimeters. Uh, probably 34 because I'm not quite halfway between the 30 and the 40. I'm going to call that 34 millimeters. Now we're going to find out the transmission temperature. Okay, I have the accessory on only without the engine running. I'm going to start using these keys here. Show you what we're going to do here. Okay, hit OK. We're going to go up. Till we get vehicle info. Okay. Now we can go left and right. That's the voltage on the battery. We got a left and oil life, oil temp, mm -hmm. transmission temp right there, 84 degrees. That's about right for ambient temperature. It's about how hot it is right now. So right now at 84 degrees, we have 34 millimeters of fluid using the tool um, that we made. Okay, so the problem with me taking the uh, fluid level reading with a cold transmission with the engine off is that 34 millimeters at 84 degrees isn't even on uh, the chart at all as a reading. Um, and that's because the chart is designed for the transmission to be at operating temperature and for the engine to be running. 
Um, so at this time right now, I won't put the chart up. I'm going to put the chart up at the end uh, of the video so you guys can refer to the chart uh, if, you, if you do your own checks uh, the correct way uh, at operating temperature of the engine running. Um, so we'll move on from that. So now, now that we've covered that, we're going to pull this drain plug out. Oh, you'll notice I already pulled off the protective plate underneath here, the uh, plastic uh, carpeted thing. Okay, drain plug is eight millimeter Allen. Easy peasy. Okay, that will drain this, and I'm losing the light outside. Um, maybe someday I should get a nice garage. <laughs> um, we'll drain this, and we'll pick this up again tomorrow. Oh yeah, that looks icky. Use a technical term. And I've I have drained the fluid, so now I'm gonna go ahead and try and measure it, and I'll show you the little pump device that I bought that I'm gonna use to refill the transmission. It's kind of tedious, um, but here we go. Okay, so I didn't have any uh, real good measuring device on hand to be able to measure quartz with any kind of accuracy. So what I have here is I have um, several quarts of this. I think I bought too much. Um, but this is exactly one quart of the Mopar 8 and 9 speed ATF. Uh, there's the part number. That's what's specced exactly for this transmission. And in this um, paint bucket liner, I've poured the entire quart in there. So now I'll know, at least in this container, exactly how much one quart is. And I'll give myself an indicator line here. Once I know how much came out, I'll put the same amount back in uh, with a pump. Okay, so here's my process I set up. I've got the fluid that I drained uh, from the transmission. I got my measured container like I uh, talked about. I took the time to mark out three quarter half and one quarter increments. So when I get to the last amount of this fluid, I know what I really need. And then I'm gonna put the uh, old fluid in this jug uh, for recycling. So, just looking at this, I would say, adding a little bit that I spilled, I'd say we're about four and one-eighth quart. So the car has actually been draining for about uh, 12 hours. So I would not use this reading that I just got of four and approximately one-eighth quart. I would not just automatically use this for your vehicle. Um, depending on how long you let it drain, I would still go ahead and measure it out like I did so you know exactly what came out so you can put the exact same amount back in. And uh, I think I'm at the point now where I can put the drain plug back in um, and I can uh, show you the pump that I use uh, for that uh, to, uh, to refill it. So this is the type of fluid transfer pump that I'll use. It's very cheap. Uh, it's probably 15 to 20 dollars at most local parts stores. You can find it online too, I'm sure. So basically what happens with this is it screws right onto the top of most one quart containers. It's got this long straw on the bottom so it can reach the bottom of the container. Okay. I'll actually curl in a little bit at the bottom. And you can tighten it to the top like this. Now, now you can route this into that fill hole that was so tricky to get to. And then basically you just pump away. It is tedious. It takes some time. Um, but you can pump away one quart after the other. Okay, so this is what I rigged up in order to use this pump. Um, the vinyl tube that comes with these pumps is not quite long enough to reach all the way in there. Um, unless the bottle is lifted like this. So in this orientation, I should be able to, uh, be able to fill this transmission properly. Just make sure that the, that tube goes in at least a little bit, like past the threads of the fill hole so that it actually will, uh, will start working for you. Okay. So I've reached the end of the first court. And you see how this is tilted like this? Remember that this has a straw that comes down. It's a little bit longer than the bottle, and it's going to curve. 
So I tilted this and I give it a few extra pumps so I can get the last bit out of this bottom corner. Now I'm gonna try and show you my recommendation for changing bottles uh, to minimize spillage. So I got every little bit I could out of that bottom corner, like I said. Now I'm gonna pull this straw off the pump and tuck that upwards, just like that. Because like I said, it's tricky to get it into that transmission. It's interesting. So now you leave the straw in place, get your pump put on the next quart. Now we can reattach the straw to the pump. And hopefully this will save you some extra headaches. Okay. Put your straw back down here. Make sure the other end stayed in the transmission. And is deep enough, it's not gonna pop out on you. And you can get back to work.